Let's bring in our guy, Brad Powers. He was on the show on Monday, breaking down his best bets. We'll recap those here at the end of the segment. But Brad, uh, let's get right down to business here and discuss some of these big games going down this weekend. Let's start with this uh, Michigan State-Washington game, a spread of 16. What are you thinking for this one? Yeah, I'm going to go contrarian here. I actually like Michigan State in this game, but I'm not in a race to to bet it because I think there's so much negativity around this Mel Tucker situation in Michigan State that I think, you know, Joe Q Public is, you know, no disrespect (laughs) intended there. I think uh, they're going to want to bet Washington. So let's wait until game day, get a good number on, on Michigan State. And reason being for me is, I didn't think much of Mel Tucker, so he doesn't move. He doesn't impact the point spread to me. I mean, certainly there's some distractions, but I think a lot of these situations, you get a one-game rallying point, and it's a big game against a Washington team. It's at night at home, and traditionally, Michigan State as a program, typically chip on their shoulder. It doesn't matter who the coach is. Bringing in Mark D'Antonio, who was classic example of that, you know, thought process as an you know an analyst or, or whatever. I think only further cements that that thought process that I have that Michigan State's going to play their best game of the season. Will it be enough to beat Washington? No, but I think it's going to be enough to make it uh, a very close game, at least uh, late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Okay, so Michigan State to keep things competitive there. Uh, kind of a fun looking game here. Tennessee, Florida, total of 48 and a half. You think it will be really fun and go uh, over? You think that total is too high? Yeah, let's go under 58 and a half in this one. Uh, I, I know it's tough betting uh, a Tennessee game under when they run more plays per minute than any team in the country, but it doesn't matter how many plays you're running if you're not efficient, uh, which they aren't compared to what they were a year ago with Joe Milton under center compared to Hendon Hooker. And the reality is they have not faced a good defense yet, but yet here we are against Virginia and Austin P. and on a possession in and out basis, they, they just, I mean, to put it in perspective, there's a minute left in the second quarter against Austin P last week, and Tennessee's high-powered offense, the highest-scoring offense in the country last year, has six points on the board. So that, there are some major concerns here, and now they're stepping up way in class as far as defensive personnel and talent against Florida at night in the swamp. I think they struggle, and I also think Tennessee's defense, though, is improved on that side of the ball, and Florida's offense will struggle. So let's go under 58 and a half. Okay, let's keep ripping through these. Another fun one. There's going to be a lot of eyes on this one, obviously. A lot of attention on Colorado these days. Colorado, Colorado State, uh, a total of uh, 60 and a half. Do you think uh, this is going to be a high-scoring one? Yeah, so multitude of reasons why I like the over here. Number one, obviously, you know, I don't know why these coaches are doing it. Uh, they're giving Dion more fodder. I mean, it came out today that, you know, I, I don't understand it, but uh, Jay Norvell, the, the coach for Colorado State, says, I don't know about you guys, but when I talk to grownups, I take my I take my hat off and my glasses off when, when I'm talking to the media. Uh, so obviously a shot at Prime. So if Prime gets the opportunity to run it up on Colorado State, which I think they're capable of, he'll do so. He's not going to take the foot off the gas pedal. And also Colorado State is going to change their quarterbacks. They were much more effective uh, late in the game against Washington State with, with uh, the, the Nick, Nicolosi kid. Uh, so I think they can have some success against the Colorado defense. It hasn't impressed me. So I, I think uh, we're going to see a high scoring game late Saturday night, over 60 and a half for me. Okay. Let's add another best bet to the ones you gave out on Monday. Just to recap for the viewers, if you didn't catch Monday show with Brad, he gave out Syracuse minus two and a half San Jose state Toledo over 56 and a half and Northwestern plus 19 and a half. Uh, and you have another one to add uh, LSU uh a nine and a half point favorite versus mississippi state you like lsu in this one yeah this is my favorite bet of the week uh and i know wow. uh people are gonna say oh early start time did you see lsu against Florida state they got whipped mississippi state tough place to play with the cowbells i'm here to tell you i i don't think much of this mississippi state team this year uh i saw them last week against arizona they're at home mississippi state is a touchdown plus favorite they are plus four in turnovers and yet that game had to be won in overtime at home, Mississippi State against Arizona, when they were plus four in turnovers. Typically, when you're plus four in turnovers, you are covering well over 90% of the time. So the fact they didn't cover says that, to me, that they're extremely overrated. And I also think the public and the market downgraded LSU too much for the, uh, the Florida State final score. The reality was six minutes left in the third quarter. That's a tie ball game. LSU's wide receiver drops what could have been a touchdown pass 
uh, that would have put them up seven late third quarter against a, a really good Florida State team. So I thought LSU got a nice reset last week against an FCS school. Uh, they did what they needed to do, put a 72 spot on, on Grambling. So I think they bounced back here, and, you know, I think they win comfortably. In fact, I mean, I, I'll take a 10-point win, but honestly, I think this is a 17-21 to 21 point win for LSU. LSU, there you have it. We'll lock that one in. So let's leave it at this, Brad. So we're getting right into the thick of things here a little bit. Is there anything that you've seen the first two or three games from these teams that has dramatically changed your opinion on either a team or a player based on uh, what you thought was going to happen coming into the season? Well, obviously, it's Colorado. I mean, would be Exhibit A. I've upgraded their power rating 11 points since the start of the season. That's never happened before. 22 points since the end of last season. That's never happened before. So, I mean, they're the biggest, uh, obviously, upgrade or downgrade for any team by far. I'm usually pretty conservative when it comes to power ratings. I'll say this. I think generally, overall, because everyone wants to talk national title, I think it's a wide open race as we've seen in maybe a decade or more wow. in college football. Georgia does not look the part. Ohio State's down. Alabama's already lost. Clemson's already lost. That's really opening the door for other teams like Florida State, Texas, USC, Notre Dame. We'll see what they got next week against Ohio State. I mean, typically I only think there's three, four teams that can win the national championship. This year it might be double that. It might be six, wow. eight, maybe even ten. Damn. Okay. Wide open. It's nice to see parity in uh, college football. So exciting to see as uh, the season keeps on rolling here. So uh, Brad, yeah, we'll leave it at that, my man. Thank you for joining us again. Best of luck with your bets on the weekend. We'll catch you on Monday. All right. Sounds good.